Good evening, good evening. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, teacher, good evening. Good evening, how are you? I am, uh, I am en route uh, to home, teacher. All right, be careful, please. Dry, yes, teacher. Dry carefully. All right. Yes. Okay, let's see, Nelson, how are you? How do you feel? Good evening, teacher. I'm great, teacher. Excellent, very good, very good. How was your weekend? Mm, was a little easy, teacher. Pretty good. Yes. Could, could you rest a little bit? Yes, yes, All right, that's good for you. <laughs> At least one day, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> I know Thank you. You, you work a lot. Okay, teacher. <laughs> and how is the platform? Did you work on the platform? Yes, teacher. Excellent. That's the attitude. So, guys, yes. we are starting a new week. It's Monday. So, I hope you could rest during the weekend because today is time to continue studying, to continue practicing, okay? So let's keep working on it. Today we are going to start a new unit, okay? And remember guys that, well, basically this is the last week, okay? So, um, this is the last week, and after this week, the level is over. Are you ready for the next level? Yes or no? Oh my gosh. Are you ready for the next level, everyone? Yes, teacher, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Of course you are, guys. Let's try to be confident. All right. So we are going to practice different topics today. All right. Um, we are starting again a new unit. So I hope you haven't forgotten the topics that we have been studying. Okay. Pretty good. So I'm just waiting for everyone to connect. So we can start. Is it rainy in your city today? Yes? No? It is very hot. It's very hot. It didn't rain yeah. in your city? Absolutely nothing. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, in my city, it rained during um the afternoon, so it's not so hot <laughs> as usual. But yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Only Nelson has the camera on. I understand Magdaleno because he's driving, but the rest of you guys, I want to see you. Camera on, please. Come on. This is the last week. Let's give the perfect, the most as we can. So camera on. Come on. I want to see you. All right. So do you remember the topics that we have been studying? The topics that we studied last week? Yes? No? Ah, so you don't remember. Oh my gosh. Uh huh. Anyone? Do you remember the topics that we studied? Uh, I remember the first conditional teacher. All right. First conditional. <laughs> yes. Do you remember the first conditional, everybody? Yes, a little bit. A little bit. Okay, that's the one, that's the one. Okay, we are going to start. Let me start sharing the presentation. 
Um, let's see, let's see. Welcome everybody. Welcome to the class. I want to see the camera on, please. Camera on. Okay, um, can you see what I'm sharing? No, teacher. Mm. Okay, give me a second. Let me try to share it again. Okay. Mm. Okay, let me change my connection because it's a little bit slow. Okay, meanwhile, I'm trying to share it, but I don't know if you can see it. Can you? Not yet. Mm, what's going on? <laughs> okay. What about now? Nothing yet? Yes, yes? Oh, okay, pretty good, excellent. I don't know what was happening. Okay, so today is June 12th. Okay, we are starting week number five, and this is the unit number five. I'm sorry, number four. So this is basically the last one, everyone. Okay, so one more week and we'll go to the next level. So today's topic is adverbs to qualify verbs. So today, basically, guys, we will be discussing a little bit how we can use adverbs, how can we use verbs, how can we use the adjectives, okay? So we, we are going to combine those topics. First, before checking this, this is the class objective. A, a need a volunteer, please, for reading. Me, teacher. Thank you, go ahead. Advert to qualify verbs. Class objective participant will be able to explain the relevance of an effective in inventory management and practice using adjective and adverb. Thank you. That's the one. So we are going to divide the class in two parts. Okay. The first one we are going to talk about some inventory management yeah. and yeah. then adjectives and adverbs. Yes. It just started raining here. I don't know if it's after you can hear me. So I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Thank you for letting me know. No worries. If you have a question, you can send it in the chat. Okay? Pretty good. Okay. First of all, let's review the first conditional to see if you remember everyone. We are going to share some sentences and you have to tell me what is the correct answer. Okay, so let me open up the exercise. I can see little students, I mean, a few students today. Where is everyone? Oh my goodness. Okay, uh, can you see the exercise, everyone? Yes? Yes, teacher. Excellent. Okay, look at the first one says, if you, so what do you think? Do I need simple present or future? If you don't live or if you won't live? The first one, don't live. Okay. If you don't live now, future or present? Future. Future? So you'll miss the train? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> totally. That is the one. Remember, guys, that the sentence with is is the one that is in simple present. And the result is in future. Okay, very good. What about the number two? Peter, what do you think? Will pass or passes his exam? Will pass. Will pass. Okay. If he works. 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 Yes. Hard. Correct. So if you see the same structure, 
But in this case, we started with if. In the second sentence, if is at the end. So we can switch the order. Don't forget it. Teacher, um, yes? I have a little question. I don't know if it's good, but it's possible use to twice uh, will. Maybe uh, if you don't leave, and now you will the train and will, or, or if I have to, why it's possible you said to oh. twice will for two verbs or will one will and two verbs or will okay. verb and will verb. Okay, got it. Imagine that you can say, if you don't leave now, you will miss the train and you will be late. That's what you mean. Uh -huh. Okay, if I add another sentence, well, you can easily say, um, and you will be late. Mm -hmm. Or in this case, because it's a connection sentence, I mean, it's a continuation of the first sentence, mm -hmm. we can say, if you don't leave now, you will miss the train and be late. So, mm -hmm. will connects with B, but in the best option, I recommend more the first one, okay? Because in this case, there are two sentences. Mm -hmm. Si los verbos fueran a la par, in this case, there is no problem because you can say, if you don't leave now, you will miss a... Imagine that you, that you give a list of verbs. Uh, you will be, arrive, and I don't know, get late, for example. So si damos una lista de verbos, we can just say the verbs and there is no problem at all. Pero como acá ya son dos sentences diferentes, the best option is to use will in both sentences. Okay? Okay. Thank you, teacher. You're very you. welcome. Pretty good. Okay, let's continue. I need a volunteer for reading the number three, please. Goodbye, teacher. Okay, go ahead. I was, who was reading? I heard someone else. Okay. Adriana. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, Adriana number Thank three, you. Hector number four, okay? If it, it will, if it rains tomorrow, we, we will go to the cinema. Okay, everybody, do you agree? Yes, I agree. If it rains tomorrow, we will go to the cinema. Remember, the ones with if is in simple present. Good job. Okay, Hector, can you continue with the number four, please? Hmm. Hmm. Ah, okay. The teacher will be angry if you uh, arrive late again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <Just> guys. <laughs> Ooh. So be careful, guys. The teacher will be angry if you arrive late <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Pretty good. Okay. Volunteer for the number five. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, I'll tell her the news, news if I'll see her next week. Mm, so I have two in future. Oh, no. Second is, is present. Okay. Like this? Yes. Okay, I'll tell her the news if I see her next week. And that's the correct one. Excellent. Volunteer for the number six. Who wants to try? Me, teacher. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I'll have some leg away this evening if I finish work late. Okay, everybody, what do you, uh, do you agree? Yes. Yes, I'll have some takeaway this evening. 
if I finish work late. What is the meaning of take away? Do you have any idea? I don't have an idea. But I have it. Exactly. Away. That is the one. Imagine that um, you go to a supermarket or to mm. a mall and you buy food. So they will ask you to take in, like to eat inside of the restaurant or to take away. Okay. Volunteer for the number seven. Who wants to try? Only one, please. Me, teacher? Yes, go ahead. If you don't practice more, you won't improve. All right, everybody, do you agree? Yes. Yes. Ah, so this is for you guys. If you don't practice more on the platform, for example, you won't improve, okay? Be careful, be careful. Okay, next one, number eight, volunteer. Me, teacher. Yes, go ahead. Uh, if we don't catch the bus, we will be late. Okay, if we don't catch the bus, we'll be late. Everybody, is that correct? Yeah, it is. Yes, all right. Uh, next one, who wants to try? In this case, if you see, we are using might. This is another model. We are going to study models. Well, I think that in the next levels, I'm, I'm not sure in which one, but might, is a model, guys, that is very similar to will. Mm. And they are always talking about possibilities. Okay? So if you use might, it's similar as if you are using will. So in this case, what do you think? Might you have. Ah, very good. You might have an accident if you... Right. Drive so fast. Ah, very good. So for the ones who drives, guys, be careful. Don't look at your cell phone while you are driving. Don't drive so fast. There are a lot of accidents nowadays. Do you see the news? The bus today. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen that. What happened? It closed the day. Okay. Really? Way to Cincinnati. Oh my gosh. And I've seen I've, I've seen a lot of motorcycles. And yes, cars. It's yes, it's common motorcycle and cars yeah. and also the the trailer trailers. Yes, I know. So guys. Be careful. If you are driving, don't drive so fast and don't look at the cell phone, please. Okay? I want it to stay safe. All right. The last one. If you... Want. Okay. Want. If you want to arrive earlier... We'll take... We'll take the train. Can I say that? Yes. Yes. So, guys, this is basically the first conditional. Remember, in the first conditional, we have two sentences or clauses. One clause is in simple present. That clause starts with the word F. And the second clause, it starts with future. Okay? And remember that we can switch the order there's no problem at all uh, yes herman do you have a question yes the that word made might. is might is similar to made yes actually guys you have to consider that may and might they are like twins 
<laughs> they are very similar, actually. There are very little differences between those. And when you started models, you will see the differences, but they are very, very similar. Okay? But both system future, teacher, both, both were may or may I, when you say may I, it's that is polite word. What happens, guys, is that we can use them in different scenarios. One of the scenarios where you can use might and may is to talk about possibilities. For example, you can say, tomorrow it might rain or it may rain. And we are saying like, tomorrow posiblemente llueva, right? Or puede que llueva mañana. That is what we are saying when we use might or made. So we can use it for possibilities. But also another scenario where we can use might and made is when we are asking for permission, okay? So si ustedes quieren sonar like very polite and very formal, you can say, for example, may I go to the bathroom? Okay, may I talk to you? May I ask you a question? So if you are asking for permission, may is the best option. Understood? Yes, yes. so those are the scenarios where we can use them. Got it? Questions? Okay, no worries, guys, that there is a topic about models. Okay, so you can continue studying that topic. Um, I think that you will see it in the next levels, if I'm not wrong. But I just don't know exactly in which ones. Now, guys, I'm going to check attendance before continue. I can see few people with the camera on. I don't know what happened. So for the one who has the camera off, Turn it on, please. I want to see you guys. Okay, when you listen to your name, say present. Adriana Escalante. Present. Okay, very good. Um, Carlos Abrego. Carlos. Okay, very good. Cristian Alexander. Present. All right. Erika Yasmin. Oh, I think she's listener, sorry. Uh, Fatima Denise? Present teacher. All right. Uh, Germán Alexander? Present. Good, Hector Francisco? Present. Very good. Isabel Hernández? Present, miss. All right. Ivan Guzmán? Ivan? Um, Jamie Raquel. Present teacher. All right. Holman Giron. Present. Okay. Lucy Natalie. Present. All right. Magdaleno Escalante. Okay. Uh, Mirna Elizabeth. Present. All right. Um, Nelson Antonio. Okay, uh, Oscar Armando. Oscar Armando. Okay, and Rosalina Alvarado. All right, pretty good. Okay, guys, let's continue. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you believe superstition, guys? Uh -huh. In my case, no, teacher. <laughs> you don't? And no, you guys? I don't. Okay. Everyone, what about you? Do you believe in superstitions? I try not, teacher, but in some time, um, I have a do, do, do that, um, doubt. Doubt. Some doubt. <laughs> 
All right. Can you give me examples of superstitions? When people say the cat, the black cat, when you saw a black cat or something like that, I'm not, not yeah. remember exactly. But, but They are unlucky, exactly, mm -hmm. imagine. So we are going to use superstitions to use the first conditional. For example, these are some popular superstitions. Let's complete the sentence. In the number one says, if you, what do you think, will open or open? Open. Okay. If you open an umbrella indoors, it, <laughs> what do you think? Bring. It will bring. Ah, very good. It mm -hmm. will bring bad lucky. <laughs> what is the um, meaning of indoor? Dentro. Dentro. Exactly, inside, okay? So what do you think, guys? Do you think is that possible? <laughs> Teacher, if uh -huh. the umbrella is wet, it's probably you have a bad look because swipe, uh, Lizard. Swept? Swept. Ah. Swept. The, the floor is wet. Are That's is, true. Is, so, are, is, is is because it's their person mm -hmm. mm, okay that's a good point have <laughs> you ever guys opened an umbrella indoors yes yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, 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 and what happened to you did something unlucky happened or not not really maybe no i don't remember <laughs> yeah I... No, that remember, but because I don't believe, but I don't know. <laughs> okay, so we never know. Okay, look at the yeah. next one. Volunteer for the next one. If you, if you see two mac feet, okay, mac. simple present. What will happen? You <laughs> will be lucky. Okay, you will be. Oops, sorry, sorry. You will be lucky. Okay, we got magpies. What the meaning to share magpies. magpies? Extra point for the ones who, who guess it. Magpies. No? Magpies, no. I will show you a picture. Look at this. Okay, can you see what I'm sharing? No, yeah. No. What happens? Oh. I'm sorry, I don't know what happens with my connection. Okay, but magpies is a type of bird, but I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yes? Beautiful bird. Yes, it's supposed that if you see like two together, it's very lucky, but they had to be too, okay? This, um, this superstition is very popular, but in British. Uh, in our country, we don't see this kind of birds, right? But in British, it's like very common. This is for us like doves. Do you know what dove is? Yes. No, Dove, no. cuando van no. al centro histórico, next to the cathedral, on the floor, there are a lot of uh, doves. Uh, the... Palomas? So, exactly. Uh, so, para, sure. in New Kingdom, para ellos es así de common <laughs> to see them, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, what do you write that word? How do you write that word? Which one? Uh, paloma. Oh. You can say dove or uh, you can say dove. pigeon. Uh huh. Dove like <laughs> like the 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 soap. Like a soap. Uh huh. <laughs> or you can say pigeon like this. Uh huh. Pigeon. Pigeon. Um, I hear pigeon. Pigeon like this. Pigeon. Okay. Both. Mm -hmm. All right. So that is the meaning. 
let's go back in here. So if you see two magpies, you will be lucky. So in our country, it doesn't apply because we don't have those kind of animals. Okay, number three, if you, what do you think? Break a mirror. Ah, if you break a mirror, what will happen? You will have seven years of bad luck. Yeah, I care, <laughs> I care about that. <laughs> do you believe in these guys? What do you think? No. Have you ever no. broken a mirror? No, never. Never. <laughs> no. Oh, ah, so you don't know exactly what could happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I do. I'll break in. I'll broken. I'm sorry. A lot of actually. <laughs> a lot of mirrors. So now I understand. Hmm. <laughs> and you have seven years of bad luck. <laughs> oh my goodness. With oh, them no. <laughs> with the amount of mirrors that I have broken. I mean, I have uh, like a hundred years of bad luck. Oh my God. Look at the next one. If you, what do you think? Uh huh. If you, uh, walk, if you walk under leathers, something bad will happen to you. All right. What do you think? Do you believe in this one, guys? Hmm. Hmm. Do you know what a leather is? Yes. Step, escalera. <laughs> yes. So do you believe in this, that if you walk under a leather, something bad will happen or not? No. It's just a superstition? Yes, this is yes. <laughs> okay. Number five. What will be the sentence in the number five? You will have bad luck. Okay, you will have bad luck if you if you put your shoes on the table. <laughs> okay. Have you ever heard this? Yes. You never heard no. that about? Never? No. Never. My grandmother used to say that this is very unlucky. Don't put your shoes on the table. <laughs> she said that it represents that you are dead. <laughs> because when somebody passed away, look as he ended up on the on the table, <laughs> right? So that's why it represents bad luck. But do you believe in that or is it just a superstition? What do you think? In my opinion, it's a superstition. <laughs> okay. But just to prevent, be careful. <laughs> now, number six. What happens, guys, if a black cat... Uh-huh. <laughs> Cross. Hmm. Are you sure? Yes. Simple present. Black cat. Singular. Third person. Crosses. Thank you. So, if a black cat crosses your path, uh huh. Who will have? All right, so you'll have bad luck, totally. Okay, um, number seven, if you... Uh-huh, do I need changes? Blow out? Blow out. Okay, if you blow out all the candles on your birthday cake with one breath, you uh -huh. will get what you want. Wanted. Very good. You will get what you wanted. What is the meaning of blow 
out. What do you think? Soplar. Yes, like, oh, right, <laughs> for your birthday cake. So it's supposed that if you blow them all the candles with only one breath, your dream will come true. <laughs> do you believe in that, guys? Is that possible? No. Or not? No, not really. Not really. <laughs> okay. And the last one, you... What do you think? Simple present or, or future? You will. Ah, you will. Be smart. Okay. Be you will be smart if you. Eat fish. <laughs> okay, do you believe in that? This is what some people <laughs> say. That is not true. really. <laughs> the, Everybody? Uh -huh. Vitamins? How do you say vitamins? Vitamins? Vitamins. For the vitamins, maybe it can help you, but not really. <laughs> maybe. It's... Just for it. Just for it. <laughs> because the, the Japanese are, are smartest. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I mean, yeah. Japanese people, they eat a lot of fish and they are very smarter. I mean, very, very smart. Maybe okay. it's, a, it's a very good excuse to eat fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, let's try it. <laughs> it okay. Sure. Yes. Our question. Go in, ahead. Any, in any of these sentences, we can use might in uh, which one no i don't know maybe uh in the first if you, you uh if you open an umbrella in door it's might oh but in the, yes my ring but look absolutely remember guys that might and will they can we can use it for possibilities so instead of will you can use might Mind. If you open an umbrella indoors, it might bring bad luck. Bring bad luck. Or in the last one, for example, you might be smart if you eat fish. Mm -hmm. okay. Pretty good. Okay, everybody. Can you think about any other superstitions that we have here in our country? Have you ever heard any other superstition? Yes, I remember one. Are you heard someone? Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, one no, by no, one. No. <laughs> no, but okay. tell me the superstition following the structure of the first conditional. Go ahead. Uh huh. Mirna, Magdaleno. For example, for example, I remember that my grandmother said. If someone to sweat your feet, huh. <laughs> you will you never will get married. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. I no. remember that phrase from my grandma. <laughs> and what is but I, I don't know, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone? Do you want to testify? Did anyone swap your feet and you are still single? <laughs> no? <laughs> it's a superstition. Totally, right? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yes? If you have uh if you have a strong eye, you can you will not see the baby. Oh, that's true, because you can hurt the baby. I remember uh, hurt, that. Hurt, like hurt, the typical uh, the typical um oh, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. And you will use uh I don't know, think and your and your feet. Oh say. Uh, muñeca. Doll. What? Doll. Oh. I mean, are you talking about the toy, la muñeca? Or are you talking about the, no. No. the wrist? Wrist. Uh huh. Uh, you need use, you will use, I'm not, uh, think. Oh, if, uh, like a bracelet. No, I don't know. 
Red bracelet. Red bracelet with a seed. With a seed, yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. But so, it, it was a big seed. I remember that it's I a know. big seed. I don't know yeah. what kind of seed is that. <laughs> but look, that is a superstition that we have in our country. Really good. Okay, what else? <laughs> look at this. In the chat says somebody swept... Um, <laughs> the jasmine's feet and she's still single do we have any solution to break this bad luck or not que se lo barran de nuevo right <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe you will break the bad luck okay everybody what else do you have any other superstition in our country anything else that you have heard i remember I remember one superstition of what my father says is if you if you cross below a uh, stairs, it's not a stair. What is the name? Ladder. As uh, below a ladder, you have bad luck. You will no. have bad luck. Oh really? <laughs> yes. Okay, so imagine guys, that's another one. And those are superstitions. If you see, we are using the first conditional to talk about it. So what else? Superstitions in our country. My grandma always says that if you come your money on the bed, you won't have enough money. Oh, but why? Really? I don't know why. <laughs> they always okay. say, don't count the money on the bed because you, you won't have enough money in all the month. Oh my God. Okay. I've heard something about the money. If if you feel a rush on your hand, it's because you will have money. <laughs> have you ever heard that? Yes. <laughs> yes, I remember. Okay. What else? Anybody else? Do you remember any other superstitions? No, I don't know if it is a lot of uh, if it is popular. Uh -huh. But my grandma always told me that if I give shoes to my boyfriend, he gonna run away from me. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> for and real. It's the same if, if I give him a watch. It, our time together don't, uh, won't gonna be uh, long. Oh my gonna goodness! Be <laughs> yes. All right, so guys, well, don't give shoes as a gift, <laughs> okay? And don't give a watch as a gift either. That's interesting. Pretty nice. So guys, if you see, when you don't remember the first conditional, try to remember in superstitions, okay? The way that we explain superstitions, that's the way that we are going to use the first conditional. Any questions so far, guys, about this topic? Yes? No? No, teacher. Everything is clear. Okay. Every superstition is yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. okay so be careful with the superstitions guys we never know <laughs> okay now let's stop talking now about it, the first conditional we already studied that topic um let's talk about something a little bit different okay and we are going to discuss inventory management system so guys we are already in the unit number four that is the last unit for this level so i have a couple of questions for you the first question does your company handle items with expiration dates yes or no what do you think Everybody, uh huh. Actually, my com my company doesn't work with products. Mm, okay. And you guys, does your company handle items with expiration dates or not? Anyone? Nobody? I don't know if we handle items, but. 
in my case, <coughs> um, all services just for 30 days. And that specific day, you have to uh, pay the game for the service. Mm, okay, that can count as expiration date because you have a deadline. Yeah. Anyone else? Does your company handle items with expiration dates? No? Okay, yeah. think of, uh huh. Yeah, in my company, we handle product with expiration date. Ah, okay, pretty good. But it's a warehouse. Ah, nice, excellent. So guys, imagine, can you name another companies that handle items with expiration dates? Supermarkets. Supermarkets, great. What else? Food companies? Uh, yes, restaurants. Bakery. Um, the bakery, yes, what else? Companies who distribute milk. La Very, salud. Yes, that's totally true. Now, think about this. What happens to the products that go out of season or that they just become irrelevant in the market? What do you think? What happens with them? In those cases, the, the manufacturer or the distributor have to remove from the market. And what do you uh, what do you think that they do with them when they remove it from the market? What do you think? I don't, I don't know what they have and what they do. And you guys? Maybe they can sell or put an offer for sale, or maybe they keep the the company keep for the. <laughs> for the other season maybe i don't know exactly but they just they just erase um, <laughs> the <expiration> yeah <laughs> it's a pen that is closed maybe or yeah. the christmas christmas things i think i i just yeah. uh-huh if, if we are speaking about uh, christmas for example maybe people put in a um, in a warehouse, the product who are in out season, out of season. Out of season. Imagine guys, when I go to the supermarket and I see a product that is very cheap, <laughs> it's just because when I see the expiration date, ah, that's why it's very cheap. Because it's like about one or two days to expire. So maybe that's what they do, right? They put it in an offer. But imagine if the product already expired. Do you think that all those products go to trash? No. What do you think? No, I think that no, because the, the product have a, a margin, margin for the expiration, I think. Maybe they 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 sell a restaurant or something like that. Or, I don't know, because in this country, in, in our country, in El Salvador, we have not a uh, culture to to give or to or to live or charge or help people. That's pretty street. sad, actually. I have seen some restaurants when they don't sell all the food, it goes directly to trash. Just imagine how much food they just throw away instead of giving away to other people, right? So pretty sad, but those are some of the things that we are going to study today. If you are a manager of a company, how can you prevent that? You as a manager of a warehouse, how can you prevent that the product expired? So let's see an example of these conversations. Sarah is asking Ramon uh, some tips on the basics of inventory control. Okay, so we are going to read this conversation. Um, who wants to read? I need two volunteers. Uh, 
Okay, Magdaleno. Me. Who say Magdalena. me? Adriana. Perfect. Okay, Adriana, you will be Sara. Uh, Magdaleno, you will be Ramon. But let me do it bigger. Give me a second. This conversation, guys, is on your manual. So if you got your manuals with you, it's in the page 33. Okay. Uh, can you see the conversation? Yes. Pretty good. Yes, Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. How does inventory management work, Ramon? Ramon? Can I hear you? Excuse me. You need to have enough product in your inventory to sell to your customers when they want it. But if you don't want to have to mash in your inventory, or you will be paying a lot of money to have it to have it stored. Oh well, I was thinking on investing in some new case cases for the iPhone X. Do it now that the iPhone X is on stores. You will not sell much. That's one of the problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you thought you could, you could sell more than, oh, uh, because you thought you could sell more than you did, and there is a change in the market. You might end up paying for products you can't sell. Pretty good. Thank you, guys. Did you pay attention, guys, on the reading in this conversation? Yes? Yes. Okay. I hope so. Reading comprehension questions. Why is it important to have enough products in your inventory according to the conversation? What do you think? Because you have to, because you you should have enough product in your inventory when customers ask for them. Ah, that's a good idea, right? Imagine, guys, it is important so the customers can get the product that they want and when they want. Number two, volunteer for reading. Question number two, please. Okay. Yes. It is a good idea to have an excess of inventory. Hmm. According to the reading, what do you think, guys? Yes or no? It is. Why? Why? Right, because if you if you can sell all the of all, all the products that you have in your inventory, inventory you have a, a problem. Ah, so imagine guys, if you have a lot of products, it says excess, so that is too much. You won't be able to sell it and you have to pay for that product. So do you think that you will have a profit? That, uh... Yes, no. Um, Not really, no. right? Exactly. Not really. You will be investing more money than the ones that you are earning. That's why it is not a good idea. Number three, please, volunteer for reading. Uh -huh. What happens if you have too much inventory and market trends suddenly? change hmm. what do you think you have to trash the, <laughs> the inventory or... just imagine that we have an iphone or a different type of iphone every year right or with the smartphones we have a different uh, device every year so imagine that I sell 
like in the example, the cases, what is the name of cases? Do you know what is that? Yes? Yes, yes. It's like uh, cover door, no. Exactly, okay. it's like a, the cover that cover. protects your cell phone, right? So imagine that right now we have, for example, the Samsung, I don't know what is the number that they are right now, <laughs> but just imagine that the, the Samsung A50, I don't know what numbers they are right now. And I say, okay, I'm going to sell cases for the Samsung A50. And I say, I'm going to buy 100 cases. But next year, <laughs> it will be already the Samsung A51. So imagine guys, they change very fast. The market trends can change, but suddenly, and what will happen with my 100 cases? Do you think that I'm going to be able to sell all of them? No. No, really, right? Because imagine I have been selling, for example, maybe 40 and already will be, the A51. So I will lose a lot of products. That means money, okay? So that's why it's very important to have a good inventory. Understood? Yes, yes it's clear. Pretty good, excellent. So now talking about inventory, here we got some meanings and we are going to try to match these words with their meaning, okay? So I will give you five minutes, everyone, read the words and read the definitions. Remember that the key idea here, guys, first of all, don't use the dictionary. Okay, I know that that could be a little bit difficult, like teacher, but I don't know what it is. Okay, hold on. First, resolve the easy ones. There are some words that we already know. For example, we already studied stock, eh, restock, spoilage. We already checked those ones. So try to resolve this. And then try to figure it out. What is the meaning of the next ones? Remember, guys, the key is to identify the keywords. Okay? So let's try to do it. You will have five minutes. Go ahead. Try to answer it. And then we are going to check if your answers are correct or not. Go ahead. If you have a question, just let me know. Read carefully. Remember, try to identify the keywords. If you have a question, just let me know. Teacher, could you pronounce the word unusable? Is correct? And which one? And the number four. I remember in the the last uh, statement. Oh, unusual. Unusual. Yes, unusual. Read carefully, everyone. Read carefully.
If you have a question, just let me know, please read carefully. Three more minutes, three more minutes. Actually, teacher, I have a question, Go ahead. but it's not about the topic. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know if it's correct, but someone told me that uh, English English Corporativo has a kind of a line for people who is not uh, <coughs> who are not work uh, working. I don't know if it's correct. What do you mean? Oh, you mean the, the, the option to study? That's what you mean? Yes. Ah, well, I consider that they have the options for the um, no cotizantes. That's what you mean? Yes, yes, yes. They do, but I think that the program is a little bit different. Um, I'm not sure if it is only one hour, I guess. Okay. And I think that they use a different material. It's not like yeah. the manual that we use, but honestly, I don't teach in that option. Um, so I'm not pretty sure, but I think that they have. Mm -hmm. So you can ask uh, to the coordinators that we have in the group and they can help you better because I just teach in the option that is cotizantes. So yeah, I'm not pretty sure about it. Yeah, I heard someone uh, said that and I was like, oh, that's interesting because uh, some of my little sisters and um, co-workers or partners at the school, they want to continue learning English. So I remember that I heard it and I don't know if that was possible <coughs> to talk yeah. to them. Yeah, let's find it out. Okay, you can ask them directly or if you want, I will try to search <laughs> because as I said, I'm not pretty sure. I just heard that they do have that option, but it's a little bit different, the, the program. I think that it's only one hour, I guess, and the material is different if I'm not wrong. Okay, it's kind of just, just for basic, for, for the basic one because actually they doesn't know anything about English. So. Ah, so ah, okay, <laughs> yeah, I think that they have it. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I'm looking for that. So if I can ask to someone or send a mail or no, you can send a message directly. If you see on WhatsApp's group, guys, you can see the picture of people in charge. They are basically part of the um coordinators group. So pick someone. For example, the guy that is always sending a, uh, a reminder before the class. Have you seen that message? Yes. Hay alguien que siempre les escribe, right? Yes. So, yeah. uh -huh. so you can send a direct message to him. So you can ask. No problem. Don't be afraid. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, if not, I will try to investigate too. Let's see if I got an answer. I will let you know. No worries. Okay, everybody, do you have the answers ready? Yes? No? I have it. Okay. Anyone else? Do you finish? Yes, sure. All right, pretty good. So number one, let's see the answers, everybody. Stock, what is that? In my opinion. Uh huh. Please, you you first, man. Okay. For me, merchandise keep in a warehouse and available for sales or distribution. Mm, okay. Guys, do you agree? Yes, I agree. 
and the rest of you, everybody, wake up. I need to everybody participate. So yes, merchandise kept in a warehouse. Yes. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. With yes. your life? No. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that is the one. Exactly. Remember that we studied this vocabulary before. Okay, number two, inventory tracking. Hmm, what is that? What do you think? In my opinion, because it's a software and tracking are similar, is the similar topic. In my opinion is inventory tracking a software system used to keep record record of inventory levels, orders, sales, and deliveries. Everybody, what do you think? Do you agree? Mm. No. Yes, teacher. I agree. Yes, I agree. It's a software. The, the tracking. Okay, I heard someone who says no. I in my opinion is the last one, but I I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> the amount that should be available at any time for an item? Yes. Mm, so everybody? The first one? Yes, in my opinion, it's very fun. Well, actually, that is the one. Remember that? It can be a little bit confusing because we have inventory worried. That could be like the last one makes a lot of sense too. But remember that we are talking about tracking. So track is when you follow, right? The roots of something. So in this case, yes, we are talking about a software that help us to check that everything is in order to check all the orders, the delivers, the sales. Pretty good. Now, point of sale. What is that? For me, it's the time. So you can see that. Uh huh. For me, the time and place where a retail transaction is completed. Mm, okay, everybody, what do you think? Yes, I agree with Christian. I agree. Yes, yes. Because, because a point of sale is a place. It does have the sense of a place. Ah. And we are speaking a place where a retail transaction is completed. <laughs> In my opinion, is that? And guys, that's the idea. You see, keywords. It's not necessary to translate the sentence. It's not necessary to understand every single word. Keywords. That's great. You are learning. Excellent. Okay, restock. Let's see if you remember this word. Yes, of course. It's replenish a store with precious support supply. Uh-huh. Do you agree, guys? <laughs> yes. Stuck again. <laughs> Stuck again, basically. That's good. Okay. Spoilage. Hmm. Do you remember that word? Yes, I remember it's when something dam uh, damaged when you have your thing that you maybe making it damaged or Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, guys, do you agree? No? Yes, I agree. Are you sure? Yes, I am. With your life? Yes, yes with your too. <laughs> am I too? Ah, oh, come on. Yes, with your life. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm scared now. <laughs> okay, so that's correct. So remember that a spoilage is a product that becomes right rotten or unusual. We don't use it anymore and it's not good for cells. Okay, then we got par levels. What is that? 
that should be a portable at any time for an item. Okay, guys, what do you think? Yes, I agree with Katrin. It's the, it's the last one. Okay, it's guys. Yes, are you sure? Yes, it's the amount that should be available. Yes, okay. the last one. Very good. Excellent. That's correct. So the last one. First in, first out. First product in the warehouse is the first product for sell. All right. For selling. For selling. Selling. <laughs> that is the one. Exactly. So if you see, guys, keep in mind this vocabulary. And this is about reading. It's not necessary to understand every single word. So just the key ones. Identify the keywords and it will be easy to know the meaning of the sentences, okay? So when I ask you, for example, guys, do you know what is the meaning for stock? It's not necessary to give me, wow, a very full definition. No, just try to give me the keywords, okay? Is it clear? Yep. Any question with the vocabulary? Nope. You sure? Not so far. Not so far. <laughs> During the exam, right? Yes. Ah. <laughs> okay. I wanted to choose five of those words and write a sentence. But mm, because of the time, I'm going to reduce, right? Instead of five, um, just pick, okay, just pick two. One. Ah, one, ah, come on. Just two, because you see guys how much I love you, all of you, okay? Only two, the ones that you prefer. So you have to analyze if they are verbs, nouns, adjectives, adverbs. If you are using it as a verb, okay, give them a correct use. Only two. Go ahead, everyone. Write two sentences. Send it on WhatsApp's group. Don't forget to add your full names so I can see the sentences of each of you. Go ahead. If you have a question, just let me know, please. If you have a question, just let me know. Only two sentences, it's pretty easy.
I can see um, you can use different words. Only two guys. Try to pick the ones that you can understand. Remember, some of them are verbs, so you have to use them as a verb. And some of you can use them, the others that are nouns, so you have to use them as a noun. Go ahead, read carefully, read carefully. Teacher. Yes? Could I use enter for, for describe some product, um, for describe the moment when a product is inside my warehouse? Yeah, you can use it. Okay, and then enter is irregular or irregular verb? Um, it's regular. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have a question, guys, just let me know, please. Only two sentences, don't complicate too much. Okay, I can see some of your classmates already sent the sentences. Let me read them. So send your sentences everyone. And we are going to see if they are correct or not. All right, nice sentences. Actually, I like that. Okay, I will be reading all the sentences, but so far so good. Remember guys, you have to identify the verbs. Okay, that is the main point for this. And you have to identify the ones that are nouns and you have to use them correctly. So far, so good. I liked it. Pretty good. I like, actually guys, I like the sentences. Very creative, I like it. Hmm. Okay, now let me ask you guys, 
Um, with these sentences for the ones that already send it, is it easy to use or to know how to use it as a verb, as a noun? Is it easy to identify it and use it? Or is it a little bit difficult? What do you think? Uh-huh. Yes. I think sometimes it's a little difficult when you don't know if you use like a noun or like a majesty. Ah, very good. It's confusing. Actually, that is one of the most difficult. And that is what we are going to practice today, too. Okay, let's see. There is a sentence that says, we have a new system to tracking the delivery. Okay, tracking is the noun. Track is the verb. So in this case, remember that after the preposition to, we need the verb in infinitive. So it will be to track. I'm sending it the correction. But so far so good, guys. I liked it. Nice. Okay, I will continue reading all the sentences. So for the one who hasn't sent it, please do it, guys. Do it. So the idea is to be able to identify when do we have an adjective and when do we have a verb. One of the most difficult things is to identify when we have an adverb or when we have a, an adjective adverb. So those are like the most difficult ones, but it's not impossible, okay? Um, I can see another sentence, the milk was spoilage. Mm. Okay, spoilage, it's the noun. Okay, so the translations for spoilage will be like deterioro, right? Eh, hay mucho deterioro en este producto, for example. But if you want to use it as an adjective, it must be a little bit different. Do you know what is the adjective for spoilage? Anyone? You could no? use damaged. Okay, you can use damaged, yes. What else? Or you can say just spoiled, okay? So I'm sending the correction over there. Spoiled. So the product is spoiled. So just be careful with that, guys, with the adjectives verbs, nouns. Um, let's see the last one. Hmm. Okay, so, so far so good guys. I liked it, nice job. Easy or difficult to write a sentences? Uh-huh, easy or difficult? Mm -hmm. For me, it's a little bit difficult but because we are thinking in grammar the structure or the correct sentence. Exactly. So, in this case, guys, remember I know that speaking could be easier for some of you. And maybe writing is more difficult, but we need to learn. And remember, if you don't know the function of a word, dictionary, okay? Now, um, let's continue. If you didn't send the sentences, do it please, okay? Now, talking about the functions of different words, so we need to identify when a word can be an adjective, a noun, a verb. So today we are going to start with adjectives versus adverbs. This topic can be a little bit confusing, 
So everybody pay attention. Can you see the presentation? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's identify the difference between an adjective and a verb. First, we need to check what is the function. What is the function of an adjective? I need a volunteer for reading, please. Adjectives. Adjectives modify or describe nouns or and pronouns. They usually come before nouns, but can be used after linking verbs, such as be, become, feel, get, look, smell, sound, and taste. So, what is the function of the adjectives? What do they do? Modify nouns and pronouns. Ah, they modified the nouns or pronouns. In few words, they described the subject, okay? So for example, look, Amy has a lovely house. Tamara has a blonde hair. So what am I saying here? I'm describing a noun. In the first sentence, what am I describing? In the first sentence. No, Amy's, house. She... Amy's house. Amy's house. What can I say about the house? Is the house ugly or not? It's lovely. lovely. Very good. So I'm giving a characteristic of a noun. How about in the number two? What am I describing in the number two? Okay. It's Tamara's hair. Just the question teacher in this mm -hmm. one. It is not blondy. Blondy. Mm, blondy. Actually, I've never heard that one. I heard that that word in uh, legalmente rubia. Ah, <laughs> legally okay. blonde. Let me see. Um, blondy. Mm. Okay, let me check because I've, I'm not sure. So maybe Blondie is an adverb, maybe? Um, actually, you can use it, but I'm not sure. I have to search for the definition because the dictionary doesn't have that word. I will check. I will check the definition and I will let you know, okay? Uh, so, Paulo is sleepy. So be careful here because some people might think that sleepy is a verb and it is not a verb. Sleepy is the adjective. And here is something that you have to keep in mind. In English, we know that the adjective goes before the noun. So for example, if I say, I have a car red, is that correct? This is red car. Exactly. So the adjective goes before the noun. However, what happens if you are using these verbs? Be, become, feel, get, look, smell, sound, taste. What happens here? We have to use them after and a clear example of this is like if i say i am happy or i happy am what is the correct one it's i am happy exactly i am happy so the adjective comes after the verb it's the same with the other ones. I feel um, tired. If I have this type of verbs, I need to put the adjective after 
the verb. I feel tired. I get excited. This food smell delicious. She look oh, she looks beautiful. He becomes famous. All right? So if we are using these verbs, we can combine them with adjectives and the adjectives will be after the verb. Is it clear the way that we can use adjectives? Is it clear what an adjective is? Yes? And for me, it's clear. Okay. And guys, how about you? Yes, it's clear. Okay. Identify the adjectives actually is pretty easy because we know that the adjective just represents a characteristic. They are describing something. Now, let's see the function of the adverbs. They are a little bit different. So I need a volunteer, please, for reading about adverbs. Only one, please. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, go ahead. Adverbs modify or describe verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. Many and with L-I. L-Y, thank L -Y. you. Mm -hmm. So imagine, guys, at the beginning we say the adjectives modifies what? The nouns. Nouns and pronouns. Exactly. What is the difference with the adverbs? The adverbs modified what? Only the, the nouns? Terms. Ah, we modify the verbs. What else? Adjectives. The adjectives or and other? other adverbs. Exactly. The difficult thing with the adverbs is that we have different types of adverbs. We had adverbs of frequency. Do you remember the adverbs of frequency? A pair of them. <laughs> okay, can you tell me the adverbs of frequency, guys? Frequently. Okay. Always. Always. Uh -huh. Almost never. Uh huh. Never. Good. What else? Generally. Uh huh. Very good. All right. So I can see you remember. Yes. Yeah, so those are adverbs. We have adverbs of manners. We have adverbs of degree. We have different type of adverbs. Okay, now let's focus on some of them that are ending in L. Perlita. Why? Be careful with the microphones. What? This is the typical idea in Spanish. Okay, I have an adjective. For example, the adjective happy. <laughs> what is the translation of happy? Feliz. Okay, and what do you think? What happens if I say happily, if I add L-Y? What will be the translation? What do you think? Felizmente. Ah, that is the one. So guys, that is basically the meaning of the L-Y. Happy is the adjective, but if I add L-Y, this is the adverb, okay? The first one is going to modify a noun. So I can say, she is happy. ¿A quién estoy describiendo aquí? She. She. So if I want to use happily, no voy a describir al noun. I can describe the verb. So I can say, she smiled happily. What am I saying there? Uh, 
Ajá. Ella sonrió felizmente. Ah, very good. So, I'm saying basically, she is my happily. ¿De quién estoy hablando o qué estoy describiendo? I'm talking about she or the way that she smiled. The way she smiled? Exactly. So, that is the function of the adverbs. They are not talking about the subject. They are modifying the action. Is it clear, everyone? Yes. Yes, teacher. So teacher, if... just just could you send uh, could you send an example for when adverse describe another adverse, please. Of of course, I'm going to show you the examples, but I'm going to be step by step so you don't get confused. No worries. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Okay. If you see, guys, first, let's see how do we modify the verbs. Because we are modifying the verbs, what is the position of the adverbs? Is it before or after the verb? Okay. Uh huh. It is after. 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 after, because we are modifying the verb. Look at the example. Tim walked slowly. What am I saying there? You are saying that Tim is slow for walk. Ah, very good. I'm not saying that Tim is slow. No, right? I'm saying that the way that he walks is very is slow. Okay? Now, look at the other one. Amelia talks loudly. <laughs> what am I saying there? I'm saying that Amelia <laughs> is loudly or the way that she talks is loudly. The way, the, the, way. the way that's the one exactly next one um joy worked hard to pass his exam what am i saying there uh -huh. why hard don't have l y ah very good observation guys we are going to have the regular adverbs and irregular adverbs. As always in English, we have irregulars and we have regulars. So with the adverbs happens the same. There are some adverbs that they don't change. And this is the example of hard. Hard is an adjective. Hard is the adverb. Okay. They don't change. Another example is fast. Fast is the adjective. Fast is the adverb. I mean, we don't say fastly. We cannot say that. So those are irregulars. There are more. I will be sharing it with you, but little by little. What you have to remember in this moment is that Adjectives modify the nouns. So the adjective goes before the noun. In this case, adverbs modify the verbs and the adverbs go after the verb. Understood? Yes? Clear? A little yeah. bit? Uh -huh. Yes, it's clear. Okay, little by little, no worry. I know that this topic might be a little bit confusing, but little by little, we are going to be learning it. Now, I'm going to share with you some examples, but before that, I'm going to say, check attendance again. So everybody, when you listen to your name, say present. Adriana Escalante. Present. Cool. Carlos Abrego. Present. Okay. Christian Alexander. Present. Okay, Erika Yasmin. Present. Okay, Fatima Denise. 
Present. Um, Germán Alexander. Present. Héctor Francisco. Present. Um, Isabel Hernández. Present. Okay. Iván Guzmán. Present. Okay. Eh, Raquel Escobar. I'm Present. sorry. <laughs> I always say Jamie, but <laughs> okay. Eh, Holman Giron. Present. Okay. Lucy Natalie. Present. Magdalena Escalante. Present. Eh, Mirna Elizabeth. Present. Nelson Antonio. Present. Oscar Armando. And Rosalina Alvarado. Okay, pretty good. Let's continue then. I'm going to show you guys some example of the adjectives and the adverbs. Look at here. Most of the time and some of the adjectives can be easily transformed into an adverb just by adding ly. For example, happy, what is the adverb? Happily, happy. okay? Happy kids, we are modifying the nouns that is kid. Or we can say playing happily. The kids are playing happily. We are using happily to modify the action. Another one, smooth. What is the meaning for smooth? It's like a soft tissue. Yes, that's the one. Soft or when you have a sore face um, mm -hmm. that is flat. That is um, the opposite. I don't know how to describe it, but it's flat. You pass your hand, you don't feel any bulbs over there. It's just flat. That is smooth. Okay, soft. Una superficie lisa, suave. Okay. Imagine I'm saying that the rock is smooth. That's the adjective. Or I can say he's running smoothly. What will be the translation here? If I'm saying that he runs smoothly, what is that? Or imagine that I say, my cell phone runs smoothly. What do you think? What is the translation could, there? Could, could be está lento? Mm, not really. Imagine this sentence. Could be suave. <laughs> running mm, but... smoothly is running slow. It is not a small, it's slow. So mm -hmm. if I say, guys, my phone runs smoothly. Remember, like si yo hablo, continuous. like what? It's like continuous. Close, close. Teacher, it can be that your phone is running all the application very well. Exactly, that's the one. So remember, smooth can be soft, but also puede ser una superficie sin ninguna abolledura, right? Una superficie plana, lisa. So si lo uso como un adverb, podría traducirse con que no hay trabas, que no hay problemas. So en este caso sería, my cell phone runs perfectly. Um, my cell phone runs without problems got it clear yes yes teacher clear yes. okay now the adjective is good good night for example so what is the adjective good there. Can you give me an example it's using good. can you give me an example using good as an adjective? 
Good luck. Good luck. What else? Good evening. Good evening. Good morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are telling me all the greetings. But yeah, for example. Good job. Good job. Good job. good job. El Salvador is a good country. Yes. Come on, guys, say yes, you are Salvadorians. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> okay, now, what about well? Well is to describe the action. Can you give me examples of well? Feel well. Doesn't feel well. Doesn't feel well. Feel ah, well. she doesn't feel well. For well. example, um, she doesn't speak well. So, for example, when we don't understand someone, y decimos, yes. ella como que no habla bien, right? So I cannot understand. She doesn't speak well. When your supervisor has an employee y el empleado, el empleado no trabaja bien, ¿cómo lo diríamos? Uh -huh. He doesn't work he doesn't good work or he well. doesn't work well. Well. As well. Because it's a well. verb. Exactly. How can I say this? No dormí bien. I can't sleep well. Ah, but it's in past. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. Well. A simple past. No dormí bien. I didn't I sleep. Didn't. Very well. <laughs> I didn't sleep. Well. Well. So in that case, guys, we cannot use. Good. I I didn't sleep good. Podría decir eso? No, no really. because good is an adjective. Exactly. So in that case, we are not describing the noun. We are describing the action. Okay. Next one. Efficient is the adjective. What is the adverb? Efficiently. Efficiently. Exactly. This one is easy because if you see, we just add ly. But remember, we have irregular adjectives, irregular adverbs. Can I say goodly, for example? No, we don't. <laughs> no, right? We can't. So these are some examples, guys, of some adjectives and some adverbs. Now, because the idea is to learn to use them correctly, let's have a practice. I have here some sentences and I want you to decide if you are going to use an adjective or a verb to complete the sentence. For example, in the number one, if I say, Anna shouted, da 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 to get someone to open the door. So do I need the adjective loud or do I need the adverb loudly? What do you think? Maybe loudly. Loudly, why? I think so this is a verb. Yes, yeah. it's a verb. Hmm, it's so. Am I describing Hannah or am I describing the way that she shouted? The way that she, the way that she shouted, shouted. Ah, so if I'm describing the action, do I need the adjective or do I need the verb? I'm sorry, the adverb. Adjective or adverb? The adverb. Are you sure? We need the adverb, yes. Yes. Good, that's it. It's pretty good. Number two, I need a volunteer, please, for reading. The weather was extremely 
hot that day. Okay, he said extremely. What do you think, guys? Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Yes. Yes, I agree. Yes, I agree. Okay, what am I describing? Am I describing the verb or am I describing another adjective? <clears throat> Other adjective, for example, oh, yeah, yeah. In this case, guys, remember what um, the explanation says. The adverbs can modify verbs, adjectives, or other verbs, or another adverbs. In this case, if I say the weather was hot, that is one thing. Pero si yo digo extremely hot, ¿qué estoy haciendo? Le estoy dando... Un incremento al adjective hot. Hot. Oh, okay? okay. So, this is an example of adverse of degree. Los adverse of degree, o como también se les conoce como intensifiers, ellos modifican a otro adjective para darle como más emphasis. So, this is an example of how an adverb modifies an adjective. Okay, next one. Lawrence is serious or seriously person. He doesn't laugh much. Serious? serious? Okay. Yes, serious. Am I describing the action or the person? The person. person. Correct. Pretty good job. Okay, number four, please. Volunteer for reading. Isabel doesn't speak very... Clearly, I often can't understand her. Okay, what do you think, guys? Clearly, is that correct? Yes, yes. it's correct. It's the way that they yes. speak. Exactly. I'm not talking about uh, the person. I'm talking about the way that that person speak. Right? Now, number five. Volunteer, please. We have a strong relationship. We've been together for 10 years. All right. Do you agree, guys? Do I need the adjective yes. in this sentence? Yes. What am I describing right now? A noun. Ah, what is a noun? Relationship. Exactly. Now, if you see, guys, when we are using the adjective, the adjective goes before the noun. So we say serious person. We don't say person serious. Mm -mm. Strong relationship. We don't say relationship strong. So the adjective always goes before. Now, number six. Volunteer, please. Uh huh. Mary, continue, man. Continue, man. Okay, Nelson. Uh, Mary was very honest with the with the rabbit and didn't hold it tightly. Mm, okay, tightly is correct. It, it it has to be gentle or gently. A gentle. Okay. Everybody, do you agree? Yes. Am I describing mm. the action or Mary. am I describing her? Mary, you describe Mary. Her. Exactly. I'm saying that she was gentle. Very good. That's the one. Um, number seven. Uh, Nelson, can you read the number seven, please? Okay. Oliver asked her to ask her the question honestly. Honestly, everybody, what do you think? Do you agree? Yes. Yes. Why? Yes. Because yes. Is modifying the action, the action of asked, the way of asked. 
Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Very good. So we are not talking that the question is very honest. I'm not saying that Oliver is honest. No, I'm just describing how the action is. Okay. And the last one, <laughs> volunteer, please. Rebe uh, Roberta is physical. Roberta is very physical, fit. Okay, guys, do you agree? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And okay. what will be the translation? Okay, Roberta is the physicalmente <laughs> in form. Ah, okay. So can I say physical fit? Physically. Uh -huh. Physically. Why? Mm -hmm. Can I say, okay, Roberta oh, está yeah. muy física yes. en forma o físicamente en forma? Yeah, it's the, it's the example that the, the, the adverb to adverb, yes, the, the adverb ah, to, mo to modify yeah, it and another adverb another in this case it's another adjective, adjective. adjective. exactly so be careful mm -hmm. guys and don't get confused in this case fit is not a noun so we cannot use an adjective here because this is not a noun remember la función de un adjective el adjective solo modifica a los nouns it cannot modify an adverb. It cannot modify another adjective. Only nouns. In this case, fit is an adjective. So that's why we use an adverb. Okay? So because we are modifying another adjective. Is that clear? Yes? Yeah. Yes. Any questions so far? Easy or difficult? It is a little, a little bit difficult for recognizing. Mm -hmm. Which one do we need? So guys, in this case, just remember the basic rules for grammar. Adjectives modify nouns. That's why the adjective goes before the noun. Adverbs can modify nouns, uh, I'm sorry, uh, another adverb, another verb, another adjective. And they most of the time go before, I'm sorry, after the verb. Look, si se fijan, siempre que usamos el adverb, el adverb va antes o después del verbo. What do you think? Después. Exactly. Después. Y cuando usamos el adjective, va antes o después del noun. No. Before. Exactly. So that is what you have to check. Okay. Now let's continue. Uh, we don't have, we just have two minutes. We are not, not going to complete this exercise, but let's try to start. I needed to check these sentences, guys, and identify if they are correct or not. Number one, if I say Sara tiredly put down the heavy shopping bags. So is that sentence correct? Yes or no? What do you think? In my opinion, it's correct because, uh, is, because the statement is describing the way um, that uh, the way uh, Sarah uh, put down the heavy shopping bag. Mm. Guys, do you agree? Mm. No, in my opinion, no. no. Maybe no, no necessary. Tiredly, cansadamente. Cansadamente. No. I don't know. Okay, what will be the translation? You need a verb before. The... But I have the uh, verb here. Not a tired, tired, yeah, but uh, tiredly. The tra yes. Translation could be. <laughs> Sara cansadamente puso las, las pesadas bolsas de, de compras o algo así. Ok. ¿Qué es eso? No cuadra. Ok, pero tengo el verbo aquí, put down. That is the verb. 
Yeah, yeah but Sara put down entirely. Ah, Maybe. all right. Now, in this scenario, guys, do I need the other? Yes or no? Necesito el adverb o necesito el adjective first. Si estoy hablando de Sara o estoy hablando de la action, del put down. De la action, put down. Exactly. So I do need the adverb. But what happens here? What is the best option, Sara? Tiredly put down or put down tiredly? Which one sounds better? Pull down, down tired. Pull down, tired. Ah, that is the one. So the adverb is correct. What happens is that we need to switch or invert the order. Okay? Now, we are going to continue with these sentences tomorrow because unfortunately oh, today no. we don't have more time. I know, I know that you want to continue. <laughs> Hasta la medianoche, right? Yes. <laughs> ah, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> So, guys, but we don't have more time. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you so much for connecting. Thank you so much for the ones that are participating. The ones that are not, please, tomorrow, I want to everybody participate. Okay? Any questions before leaving? No questions. No? no? All right. So, guys, thank you so much for being in the class. Good night. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Good night. See you. Goodbye. 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 Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.